The content you're about to enjoy comes from the archives of The Best You. We're devoted to the very best in personal development. With a magazine and resources dedicated to inspiring and changing people's lives, at The Best You, we work with the world's leading writers and trainers on the evolution of the self and people whose journeys have been affected by their work and words. For more information, go to www.thebestyou.co. Okay, cool. Hi, everyone. It's Bernardo Moya here, founder of The Best You. I'm excited and delighted to be speaking with someone who's been helping us and supporting us for quite some time now. Um, she's a lovely lady called Jackie Lappin. Hey, Jackie, how are you? I'm delighted to be here, Bernardo. It's so nice to connect with you today. Yeah, thank you so much. And uh, well, basically, Jackie, uh, you know, is... is uh, well, everyone knows Jackie, and Jackie knows pretty much everyone. So Jackie has this uh, this amazing platform called, which is Speak Opportunity uh, Cities, which provides direct contacts for thousands of speaking opportunities. Uh, you know, literally at your fingertips. Um, I, I understand, you know, what it is, you know, to be a speaker, and obviously, you know, try and find that speaking opportunity. But this is what she's done, and she's done so well. She's also created three subscription services: Speak Opportunity, Speaker Leads, and she runs. Um, and twice monthly transformational speaker leads tips sheets tips, which obviously provide speakers with direct contacts to book themselves on stages uh, across North America. Uh, she also has Speaker Unity Radio uh, Insider, which leads you know uh, to book radio shows and podcasts and speaker uh, Unity summits, which with contact uh, information for virtual summits. Uh, she's got this phenomenal platform that she's been building uh, for a long, long time with great connections that obviously makes it so easy for speakers to be able to find that those gigs. But apart from that, as I said, you know, Jackie supported us in our first event in, in Long Beach that we did here. She's been a great supporter of our show too. And, and we were delighted to, to partner up with her again and, uh, and, and share kind of her expertise. So Jackie, thank you so much. Well done. Thank you. Well, that's so, so nice of you to talk about all those wonderful things. And, you know, I love the Best You Expo. It's a, it's a great event, and I'm excited to be participating in this one again this year when you're going to be at the L.A. Convention Center, which is actually a lot closer. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. We're very excited about that. So, Jackie, tell me about, you know, kind of, let's talk about your early years, okay? You know, when before you got into what you're doing today, you know, kind of what was your calling? Did you have a clear calling or... Or, or were you just like literally trying to find your way? Did you kind of reinvent yourself? Tell us from the beginning how, how it all started for Jack. Well, you actually have to go back to the time I was 11 years old. Okay. Um, and I, we had moved to a place that really um, I was, I didn't fit in. You know, a lot of people have experienced that. Um, and so I really it was all alone. There really weren't a lot of other kids that wanted to t hang out with me. So I, really decided to marry the two things that I loved most, which was sports, the Los Angeles Dodgers in particular, and writing, which I was pretty good at at the time. And I conceived the idea of becoming a sports writer. Now, when I did that, there were very few. There, were, so Let me take that back. There were no women sports writers. <laughs> um, and so for the next several years of my life, that was my mission. And so I went on to read the LA Times and everything I could get my hands on daily. And at 20, I was at the Detroit Free Press. 21, I was at the Associated Press and on the front pages of the LA Times. And 22, I was at the Washington Post. With a little stop in there to co-host Dodger Dugout on television. So um, I segued from there into having one of the largest sports special events and cable TV PR agencies in America. And I ran that for about 20 years and it had a world-class client list. I mean, Toyota and Seagrams and Showtime and the National Hockey League. And the last thing I did was launch the worldwide poker phenomenon with the World Poker Tour, which may well be on my epitaph, actually. Amazing. <laughs> but so I spent 20 years really growing that business, driving it. And then the media changed. And it became much harder to get things for clients. Um, and, and it was just a, a, an environment that wasn't nearly as compelling. I, I couldn't really find the way to give my clients what I felt that they were paying for. So about that time, I wrote two books in personal growth. 
The Art of Conscious Creation, which came out right around The Secret. And by the time I wrote the second book, Practical Conscious Creation, Daily Techniques to Manifest Your Desires, which was the the best spiritual book of the year at the International New Age Trade Show that year. I'm thinking to myself, well, why am I just focusing on the old mainstream media when and promoting my own books? I had come up with 750 radio shows, both broadcast and Internet, that were just dying for more information. And I said, well, why not just feed that community of people who really love a, a content about personal growth, spirituality, wellness, etc.? And so that's when I rebranded the company as conscious media relations and started doing what we've been doing for more than 10 years, which is the radio podcast tours, where we introduce authors to 9,000 radio shows and podcasts. And we continue to do that extremely successfully. And we've done it for everybody from Don Miguel Ruiz and Joe Vitale and Ariel Ford and James Twyman and um, uh, uh, Maureen St. Germain and Chris and Janet Atwood. Um, And, you know, many of these great personal growth leaders, but also for first time authors. So we Sorry, I was, I was just going to ask you a question because I wanted, to, I wanted to take you back a little bit on, so tell me, how did you go from being, uh, you know, first of all, okay, so you, you started writing and, and, and you, you were in the sports and kind of you obviously had a successful career. Then you went on to run these, you know, these big gigs, these big conferences. Um, hmm. How or when or what happened for you to kind of go into, you know, writing these books where you, you know, you, you were talking more about consciousness and more about spirituality, because obviously there's a big change there, which you've just literally jumped onto, but I'm interested in exploring that side and that aspect in, in, in why that change in that. I mean, then obviously you, you, you know, you've built a career with what you do now, but, but what happened? Well, I'd always been sort of on the lip of the spirituality environment and um, uh, paranormal and uh, personal growth. Um, you know, I, uh, I have, I, you know, a strong belief in um, astrology and um, uh, intuitive abilities and a variety of these other things. And so it drew me to read a lot of books of the great leaders in our field. And uh, um, in that gr- depth of exploring my own um, uh, soul and capacities and, and all of that, I realized that there was a thread that this, mind you, was before The Secret came out that people really weren't addressing. And that was how our thoughts and our emotions really have an influence on our future. And I thought, you know, I, I need to put that in a book. And it was right. It was almost as if I wasn't writing it. It was coming through me the whole time. I wrote that book under the tr- under a tree uh, in, in my backyard and uh, where I've since learned that I have a energy vortex. And it just came forth. Um, and uh, so for me, it was being I was called to do that, essentially. And all those PR clients that we were serving, you know, and that we were doing all their publicity and, and all of that, it wasn't lighting me up any longer. And, uh, you know, as we know, in the in this field now, you know, what you what you light up is what manifests. And so in switching to per, per focusing on on this field for my books, I realized that that's really what lit me up was this exploration of consciousness and, um, and, and expansion. And I wanted to bring that to other people. It is said that we live in a world our questions create. And it's true. Those that have succeeded in life, those that stand out, those that have made a difference, those that are inventing, those that are exploring, pushing the boundaries of reality are based on those that have asked themselves empowering questions. In my new book, The Question, Find Your True Purpose, I help you find your true purpose, find your legacy. For more information, go to www.thequestion.co. If you're interested in working with me, contributing, speaking at any of our many events, partnering or licensing The Best You, for more information, go to www.thebestyou.co. And... And obviously, I think that's kind of one of the things that I, I come across. Um, and I'm obviously, you, you, you know, you, you not only have come across it yourself personally, but, you know, you, you've been supporting and helping people on that journey. Mm-hmm. But I find that a lot of people don't necessarily follow that. I, I think some people are, are kind of drawn towards it. You know, they're, they're, they're interested in it. 
but they don't necessarily then take the action of transitioning into, you know, hey, reinventing themselves, which in a degree is what you did. You know, you, you be, became a different professional, different individual with. Um, uh, don't you find that that fascinating that a lot of times that, that people are, because obviously for you it was clear and, and you just went down and wrote those books and you got them out there. But don't you find it fascinating that, that a lot of people don't necessarily follow their dreams? They don't take that action to, to kind of, you know, follow something I, different with more meaning. I do. And I think a lot of people feel trapped. Mm. and they don't see that there's a choice. They Mm. think that this is a path they're on and that they, you know, they've got family obligations, they've got financial obligations, and they are scared to to step off the path. And, of course, you know, as you change and focus on what you really are desiring, then the universe will open new doors for you. Uh, But they are not in that state of trust. And a lot of people think that... they might too late because either they're 30, 40 or 50, they think it's too late, which also again, fascinates me. A lot of people don't necessarily take those steps. Uh, so Jackie, with you in particular, obviously you have these books, which you wrote and then you, 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 you know, you're a doer. Um, you, you make things happen and you weren't going to depend on anyone on, on getting that book out there. You did what you had to do in order to kind of put it out there. And that's what you did. So you, you, you then uh, created this, this, you know, the, this strategy of yours to, to, to reach uh, as many people, connect as many people to, to kind of like, you know, in, in that case, it was particularly for you. you. You did it for yourself and you do that. So, again, you know, why and – I, and I understand why a lot of people struggle with that because a lot of, a lot of the times people just, you know, they, they feel, hey, listen, I've got limited skills, you know, I, I, I haven't really got much experience in marketing. I don't know how to promote myself and things like that. What's the difference? Well, why, why did you, what did you do? How did you do it? And then why did you know, or what, how did you know the necessary steps that you needed to do in order to kind of, you know, put your book out there, promote yourself? Well, I mean, obviously I'm a publicist. That's what my background is, what I've been doing for, you know, more years than I can count. Um, And so I really had a knowledge of doing the publicity for it, how to write a compelling pitch letter, how to put my media kit together, how how to offer it up to the media um, and where that media was. Either I had lists or I I, uh, could download them from the PR database. So that was part of it. But there was still a big learning curve that I had to go undergo about book marketing. And there's a lot of, um, you know, you learn from a lot of other people. You ask questions. You And today, there are so many people that are out there that are actually teaching this these skills. Um, I also happen to have a best friend who is in the book marketing business who helped me uh, generate a lot of this and put me in the right direction. So between the contacts that I had, the willingness to go out and find the information to, um, you know, find the people who knew you know, and, and, and go to courses. I went to a lot of conferences. I went to conferences both for marketing my services, but while I was there, my radio podcast tours in some cases, a lot of times when I was there, I was just learning a lot of information about how I could market my own books. So Mm -hmm. it was a, it was a real journey. Um, and I, you know, that's how we, in, in now that I'm in the full-time book business, uh, as you know, besides of the speaking business, I mean, my mission is to get people booked because my mission still is to change the world. Like I did with my own books. I want to change the world through other people so that we can do this better and faster. So that's basically how this all evolved, but, um, there's great information. It's so much easier to do in terms of getting the knowledge today the problem is that you still with a book today, and there are so many books out there that you're, it's hard to stand out from the crowd. It's a challenge. And that absolutely. And that's one of the things that I, I kind of experience. you know, I, I'm, I'm doing a lot more coaching and mentoring this year and I'm helping a lot more people to kind of like, you know, build their brands. And one of the reasons I'm doing it is, is because I, I feel that, that there are a lot of great people out there doing phenomenal things. And, you know, they might teach them the skills of how to improve as a communicator, as a speaker, how to write a book and, or, or, you know, how to, how to stand out and how to create some kind of revenue streams. But the, the challenge is, is that I think that a, a lot of people don't necessarily that are doing these things have the know-how and have the platform to back it up. Yeah, and that's kind of where I think there's a difference with you and a difference with, with, with us and, and our brand, you know, because yours is, is, is a kind of a proven 
method system that has grown and improved over the years, as your network has, uh, on and, and, and you literally have it there. So, you know, if, if a speaker uh, or someone's got a book and, and they want to promote it, you've made it extremely simple. You've made it extremely simple because it's all there. You know, and now they just literally got to follow through either the contacts and the potential radio interviews and things like that. And then they've got it done. So you provide a platform, which is, which is, which is something that not a lot of companies can do. A lot of people can maybe teach you the skills. Then what? <laughs> so and as you said, there's thousands of books out there and there's loads of people want to compete. So that's the then what. So, yeah, explain to me uh, and explain to me because I know you don't contract. You don't. You know, you don't go, hey, speaker, come over here, I'll pay you. No, you don't do that. But you have that network. So explain for those, because obviously we have hundreds of speakers, thousands of speakers that, that listen to us frequently. How do you help people that have the new book? They well, want to promote themselves. I want to speak. So, you know, Bernardo, that a lot of my clients who were radio podcast clients came and said, can you book me for speaking engagements? And we didn't want to book them. That's not our business. But we knew where a lot of that was. So we decided, why not give leaders contacts where they can book themselves? And so it made it that much. It was very clear because today, in today's world, speakers bureaus won't take on anybody unless they're making twenty-five or thirty thousand dollars per engagement. Yeah. Um, and they certainly don't really want people who are in the spiritual health self-help mode. They they're looking for big business and things that make money for them, or the me- mega motivational speakers. Um, there aren't a lot of, you can't find speaker agents to go out and book for you any longer. That doesn't happen. They all went out of the business because they couldn't make any money. Um, and people didn't want to, you know, um, spend the time looking for all these or didn't know where to find them. So we figured we'll just solve that problem. We will give you the contacts. And if you want to know how to do the skills, like write your radio pitch, write your your, uh, speaker one sheet, all of that, we've got uh, um, e-courses on our Speakertunity website where you can get all that information. So for so we started out with Speaker Tunity Speaker Leads, which gives leads all over North America. They're really for the transformational leader, uh, but it only gives you two or three things in your market at any given time. So each issue, you get two or three things. Um, then we did Speaker Tunity Radio Insider, which gives 25 radio shows and podcasts. So even though, you know, I've offered this major um, done for you service, some people, that was just not what they, they didn't want to go that route. It was too expensive, et cetera. So why not give them, I rated my list and gave them uh, offer uh, opportunities. And the third one, people really want to get on virtual summits because they are list building opportunities and there's nobody telling them where they are and what those opportunities are. So we created our three subscription products. But one of the things we discovered was that people wanted more leads local, close to home. And that's why they really wanted to wanted to focus. And so, and they wanted more leads that were business driven, that weren't just personal growth driven. So we created Speakertunity Cities, and that's the really exciting regional speaker lead directories for um, North America. No, I, I, I know that I'd love to come to England and Australia, all of you folks out there who've asked us, we're getting there, but we got to con- conquer the, the North American continent first. Um, and so we've already generated 20 different regional directories. We hope to have 60 by the end of 2021. Um, there are between 800 and 1,500 leads each, but there are meetings, venues, and associations because events change too fast, and we really couldn't co- cover that. This is all evergreen. So, you know, if you need to get out and sell from the stage or make an offer from the stage or get people into your community, you know, because the best way to get people to want to uh, to follow you, to buy your products, buy your services is the, the know, like, and trust you. And speaking gives them that, that nothing else does. I mean, I think that, you know, online marketing is fantastic, but there is a connection that happens in the room. Hmm. And so we just wanted to give people all the opportunities in their region. They can pick and choose, whether it's uh, business or philanthropic and service groups or consumer groups or spiritual groups. So they don't have to do the research. You know, leaders like us are busy people. And so now with the lack of support that they can get um, from speaking uh, organizations, 
they really have to do it themselves or hire a VA to do that, train somebody in their team to do it. And so this is the easy step. This makes it simple for them. So that was my mission. Get more people on stages. They can change the world better and faster, but give them an easy way to do it so they don't have to do it themselves. To find out about my latest projects, get a free coaching lesson or download my book, go to www.bernardo-moya.com. Yeah, well, brilliant. It's a, it's a fantastic service. Obviously, you know, highly recommend. So a lot of the things that you, you were sharing, obviously, about, you know, the, the importance of speaking and, and how you can connect and obviously kind of like, you know, how, you know, the reality of, hey, you, you're not, you know, agents don't pay personal development. I, I have this all the time, you know, where people come and say, well, will you pay me to speak? Uh, and will you pay for my flight? Uh, and I normally say, would you like me to fly you first class or would you like me to get you in, 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 a, in a private jet? Because, you know, people, are, they're just so disconnected with the reality of this industry yeah. that, you know, you, you tap and all of a sudden, like, you know, you get 10 motivational speakers are coming out of nowhere. Um, so, you know, kind of, you have to work, you know, you, you have to work, you're a brand, you, you have to find those speaking opportunities and the business model around it, a lot of the time, if you are offering a service, i.e. coaching, mentoring, you know, your course or whatever, you pay, you pay to play. And, 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 I, and I find it fascinating how a lot of people, you know, with no profile, you know, with no reach, with no list, uh, are expecting to, to get promoted. So apart from the, the basic advice, which I always say is, you know, get real, uh, you know, kind of like, hey, it takes us a year to promote this event. You know, we, it takes us a year. It's close to half a million, $700,000 to produce the whole thing. You know, kind of, hey, we need people to contribute, to support. But apart from that, what does it take or, you know, what does it make a – what does it, how do, you, how do you find or how do you become a great speaker? What, what are your tips on these kind of things? And I know well, there's a lot of things. I think that you first have to have a really, really good signature presentation. And um, I, you know, if, if your skills aren't up to speed, I really, there are so many wonderful speaker trainers out there. Um, and they, each one has different skills, whether you just want to do a TEDx, whether you want to do a, you know, build your um, presentation and, and, and content, or whether you really want to speak from the stage, you know, there's a spectrum of people that can get you there. So one that you've got to have that, yeah, I got to have a great offer, uh, so that people really, that really people want, uh, that will get them excited. You also should have a good free offer that you can get them enrolled in if the speaking opportunity doesn't allow for uh, a paid uh, a, 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 um, uh, a offer from the stage that involves yeah. payment. Um, then you need to um, uh, find the right stages. And one of the lovely things about what we do is when you're speaking close to home, you don't have to expend a lot of travel expense. You don't have to pay to get on somebody's stage. Yeah. You, know, you get in the car and you drive and then you can make revenue and then build up to even bigger things, you know, get on the bigger conferences stage or, you know, start building a, uh, a, a, a repertoire and history um, a track record that somebody on a bigger stage is going to take a, tra- a, a, a flyer on you. Um, and then even if you are an, exp- an accomplished speaker, you know, why not take advantage of what's locally to you, you know, when you're not on the road. So anyway, um, so you, so you, you find the locations, you need to have a great speaker one sheet. I know I've heard people say, oh, speaker one sheets are passe. I don't believe that they are still useful. Um, and uh, you know, that's, a, that's an important document that, uh, instantly gives you credibility uh, instantly tells them what you're offering because in, a, in an initial proposal email, there's not a whole lot of space. It shouldn't be any more than four or five paragraphs. And so they need to get the rest of the information. And if you're offering more than one presentation, you can put three in the speaker one sheet and they can pick and choose which really relates to them best. Um, yeah. And it speaks to the benefit of, you know, what it is that you're doing that's going to uh, change the lives of the speakers. You know, what's the problem you solve? So that's really important. You need to have some good video. Um, and it doesn't necessarily be a sexy sizzle reel. 
It can be three to five minutes of great video of you, you know, performing on stage so that they know what they're getting when they when they bring you in. Um, all of those things are really important to drive the, you know, the yeses that you get when you start pitching yourself or your your associate uh, pitches you. But I will also tell you this: if you bring in a virtual assistant or a team ma- member, don't just hand them the list and tell them, you know, or directory and tell them to walk off. You know, t- give them real strong guidance. Uh, give them samples to send. Give them. Make sure you rehearse them. Get them to sell you on you. So as if you were the speaker booker, so that the person who's representing you is really going to make the most positive, solid impression on that booker. That will open those doors for you. And and you can do it a couple of different ways. You can either have your VA just get the appointment for you. Or you can have them actually do the booking from end to end process. Um, but either way, they need to really be not somebody who just knows how to send an email because um, they're going to end up talking to people. Well, that's brilliant advice. All of that is a brilliant advice, Jackie. Thank you so much. And, and as I said, I know there's a lot of people that are listening to this that potentially, you know, are, are speakers. So I hope you made loads of notes there because there's very, very valuable insights. So Jackie, um, we have you, uh, I'm going to ask you obviously at the end to, to kind of share all your contact details so people can know where to find you. So you, you're you going to be at the Best You Expo uh, and you're going to be sharing a few things there. So tell us, what are you going to be talking about? What uh, what will you be sharing at the Best You Expo? Well, I'm going to ta- talk a little bit about, um, you know, relevance and how to make yourself relevant to a booker. Um, that's a really, really important factor. Uh, I'm going to talk about how some of the skills to, to get you, make you get, make you a standout, uh, so that somebody wants to book you. Um, I'm going to really look, you know, at all the different touch points that you need to have so that you're going to get on more stages. That's really, my goal is to help you get more visibility, more, um, you know, uh, um, uh, exposure so that you can transform your business and transform the lives of people uh, that you serve. Well, guys, um, there's going to be 150 speakers there. Uh, pretty much everyone will obviously know Jackie. I know a lot of you that are attending there are, are going to obviously just, you know, be there to kind of explore uh, either personally or professionally. So I highly recommend you you come and say hi to Jackie. And uh, why, why should people attend events like this? I know we met, so we met last time. We we were together at two different events at the same time. So in the morning, we were in the City Gala, and then we were at the Consciousness Life Expo. So there we were, wherever we were, you and I were there. Um, and you were present in all of them. Uh, so why is it important to participate? Uh, and why is it important to attend events like these live events? Because, you know, I, I obviously appreciate the importance of that connecting, meeting, engaging, looking at people in their eyes, which is kind of what we need. And we need to get off of a little bit of these things. What why, why, why should someone get involved as a professional and why should people attend as an individual uh, stroke profession? Well, I think that there's three reasons. The one is, if you're in service to the world, it behooves you to continue to learn and grow. Um, and so you, there's tons to learn from an event like this. Two, um, it's great networking. It's contacts that will really grow your, your worldview, grow your business, grow your whole um, uh footprint on the planet and two you know i mean if you're if you're a speaker or a a, um a vendor then obviously you get to introduce what you do to the world um in in a bigger format but i think um for the just somebody who's coming to this event there is just so much value and you can also have a little fun Mm. Um, cause there's some great things you can taste, you can touch, you can experience, you can get to know the leaders. You know, it's not, a, not always an easy thing to get to know a lot of the great leaders in the personal growth space. They're, they're hard to get, to get to, you know, they got lots of gatekeepers and you go to an event like this. And what I love about it is you can get up close and personal and start mm-hmm. dialogues with them. Yeah. And, and it also gives you a taste, a mm-hmm. taste of, okay, do I like this person's style? Is this somebody I want to be my teacher? Do I want to read books from this person? It gives you an opportunity to kind of see what's out there, 
whether they resonate with you and then pursue more of a, an in-depth relationship with them after you leave the expo. Great advice again. Thank you. Uh, and look, one of the things that I will, I, I will say is I always encourage people to come with an open mind, you know, because obviously research, you know, kind of look at what you, you want to, what talks you want to, you want to attend, you know, who you want to engage with. But I, I highly recommend for people to come with an open mind because, you know, sometimes, as I said, you know, opportunities are the size of petrol tankers, you know, just knocking at your door and all of a sudden you just ignore it. Uh, and, and that's what happens. Sometimes you find yourself sitting in a room, you don't know for what reason, all of a sudden, boom, you know, you get an aha moment and all of a sudden, you know, you're on a completely different journey on, on your life. Uh, so be open and be open to to connecting with people. And quite rightly, as you said, I mean, for me, I would love to attend my event as a delegate. I would love to put a wig on uh, and just have uh, put some 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 uh, Elton John glasses on, but maybe not. But and I walk around and enjoy it because I don't get a time. I don't get I don't get time to enjoy it. This year, I am hoping is I'm going to get some extra support because I want to be interviewing people. We're looking at potentially live streaming, but I want to interview people. I want to sit in the room and listen to Mr. Les Brown. You see, because for me, I mean, for me, he is the best storyteller alive. I'm sorry, for me, he's the best storyteller alive. Love, respect to Tony Robbins and Grant Cardone and all these guys. Step aside, Mr. Les Brown is at the best church. So I would love to listen to him. But as you quite rightly point, just to be able to shake his hand and show him. I remember when I, I actually shared the stage with him in New York, but I was sitting in the front, listening to him. I had go- goosebumps. I had tears in my eyes because the man is such a legend. But there's so many great people there. We have such a fantastic lineup of speakers. But what I love about our show in particular is the fact that we have so many great people like you, Jackie. You know, there, there's, there's, there's 150 people there that are bringing so much expertise, so much wisdom. And then again, remember, you know, people like Jackie and a lot of the other speakers and exhibitors, they invest to be there. You know, they invest to be there. So not only they've been working all their life and building what they have now, which they can share in a 25, 34, five-minute talk or, you know, with a link, but they have phenomenal expertise that they're putting at their disposal and they're investing their time. So the minimum you should do is invest some time and potentially, hopefully, some money in, in, in getting a ticket and coming to see us. So, Jackie, uh, thank you so much. How can people find you? Uh, give us your web pages and all the information, how people can connect with you. Well, if they're interested in the radio podcast store, they go to Conscious Media Relations. If they're interested in any of the Speakertunity services, including Speakertunity Cities, um, they can go to speakertunity.com. And if anybody wants to reach out to me, just Jackie at speakertunity.com, and I am happy to chat with folks. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much, everyone. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Jackie, thank you so much for your time. Looking forward to seeing you, and it's weeks away so see you soon terrific thank you bernardo take care lots of love everyone thank you so much take care for more information go to www.thebestyou.co